moving place values using multiplication and division. So we're going to start simple. This requires a lot of words for me, but when you're actually doing it, it's a two-step process that is super easy. But me explaining it, it's like trying to explain to somebody how to tie a shoe. Tying a shoe's not really that hard, but trying to tell somebody how to tie their shoe is really complicated. Let's take a base number. Let's take seven. Lucky seven. If I was going to use either multiplication or division, to change this number to 70, what would I do? Yes, sir? You would do 7 times 10. Absolutely correct. And we <laughs> talked about this when we talked about place values. Every time we move up a place value, it's times another 10. This 7 right here is worth 10 times as much as this 7 because math, right? 10, 7 times 10 equals 10 times bigger than 7. Make sense? Yeah. Like I said, sounds complicated. The math behind it's really pretty easy. When we follow this pattern, what if I wanted to make this change? Oh, I see. Sir? Um, you would say 7 times So it would follow then that if I wanted to keep this pattern going, I would need another 10 or another place value every time. Correct? Yeah. Correct. For every zero I have here, I have a zero over here, then we have basically one times seven each time, right? Take 1 times 7, match our zeros, which means every time we have another exponent of 10, every time this number gets 10 times bigger, really what that means is add another zero. So let's flip plus that. You guys know that division is the opposite of multiplication, right? In multiplication, we're taking two numbers, and we're taking one group, and we're taking another group, and we're taking 4 times 3. We're going to take 3 four times, three, 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 three. So it gets bigger multiple times. Division is the opposite, where we would take 12 and four and split that 12 into four equal groups. So if division is the opposite, seventy equals seven divided by what? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, YouTube. There we go. Ma'am. One zero. We move down one place value, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir? A hundred. Two zeros, we move down two place values. Correct? And our pattern is going to continue the exact same way. Every time we add a zero over here, a place value over here we're going to remove another place value, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're moving place values, what we're doing is taking factors of 10 away or adding factors of 10 by multiplying or dividing. With me so far? Yes. What does this look like that we were doing last week? Might be over there on the anchor <laughs> chart. When we're talking about taking a base number and then doing some math with it, to show where it belongs. Sir? Expanded form, yeah. Standard form is where we take our number. Expanded form is where we break it out and look at, at it by individual place value. And every time we have a place value movement up, we add a place, a zero. So, let's get advanced. You guys remember this from your pre-test? These boxes with this little chart. Yes. I'm sure you've noticed by this point in the year, we're pretty big on charts. There's a little decimal here. Right? Yes. Look familiar? Yes. Whenever everybody saw this on their pretest, they'd never seen it before. They had small heart attacks and cried a little bit. No. Right? No. This looks like a nightmare. It is some of the easiest math 
that you could possibly imagine. So I'm going to throw a math problem up here, and we're going to chart it, and then we're going to show the moves through the chart. So our math question, let's go 990 times 10. So if I'm going to chart the number 90, 90, my decimals here in fact, don't need any hanger zeros over here, don't care about those zeros. Sir, what number, if I am going to shift this over one place value by adding this zero to this 90, what number is going to go on the bottom? You just pull the line left and put another zero. Well said. Pull the line left, add another zero. By adding another zero, what he means is, we are adding a place value. If you're a teacher, you're going to say, we're adding a place value. If you're a student, you're going to say it the easy way. Just say, yeah, we added a zero. Right? Yep. Yes. This 900 is 10 times bigger than this 90, correct? Yes. Yep. Well, let's get advanced then. <laughs> advanced is not any harder at all, just so you know. Let's take 9 hundredths. times 1,000. That's an intimidating looking math problem. It really is. I know everybody. But really, all this math problem is asking you to do, so we got your decimal, placeholder zero in my tenths, I've got my nine and my hundredths. Really, all this is asking you to do is move a place value three places, correct? To increase this nine by a factor of 10, one, two, three times. Ma'am. Yes. You're warm. Let's start right here. Well, let's, let's work it out so I can make sure we're right, so I'm not wrong again on YouTube, all right? You're saying 90. Move over three place values. Our nine starts here. We're going to move over one. We're going to move over two. We're going to move over three. Yes, ma'am, you're correct. Do we need this zero? No. Not particularly, but I put it in so we could see the move hop by hop. What if I made a division problem? It's going to be the exact same thing, but moving the opposite way, right? Mm -hmm. If I had 900 divided by 1,000. Again, another intimidating looking math problem, right? But what it's truly asking us to do is hop this nine three place of values smaller, or 1,000 times smaller. Yes, sir. Then it'll be. Move it once, correct? Yep. Move it twice, correct? Yep. Move it three times. So it is nine tenths. We good so far? You can see how this would be horrible to try to explain to a person, but super easy if you're trying to do it in class, right? Let me show you one more way. And the way that I'm about to show you is the way that our assignment today is going to ask you to show it. <coughs> Let's take a number 400, or 42.74. And I'm going to say, how many place values smaller, or how many place values less is this 4 worth compared to this 4? I'm going to show you guys my trick. We were talking in the other rotations. Maths and magic are kind of the same sometimes, because magic is just knowing the right things to do to make it look awesome. Math is kind of the same thing. This change in place value looks and sounds kind of hard to figure out. But truly what it's asking is, how many times does this 4 need to drop in place value to equal this 4? So I just do a bump. One bump, two bumps, three bumps. So if we're dropping the place value, is that multiplication or division? <coughs> yes, sir. Division. If we're dropping the place value, yes, sir, it is division. 
How many times did we drop the place value? Three. Yes, ma'am. Twice. Close. Three times. One, two, three times. We have our one, told the place value of the original one, and we drop it three zeros, or three factors of ten. And if we're going to work the opposite way and raise the place value, if we were to say, how much bigger is this four than this four? It just works the opposite way. One jump, two jumps, three jumps. If we're going to increase the value of this, is it multiplication or division? Yes, ma'am. Multiplication. Multiplication. How many bumps? Yes, sir? How many zeros is that following my one that holds this place value? Uh, three. If you're a math teacher, you're going to say a movement of three place values. If you're a math student, you're going to say three zeros. <laughs> if you're a really, really good math student, you'll say a movement of three place values, which means I need to use three zeros. <laughs>